Welcome everybody to another episode of uh, Kepasa Talk. This time I'm very excited to have with me uh, Anthony Bartolo of Aduna and Ferry Grappink of McKinsey. And we're going to talk mostly about network APIs, open gateway, and how that all came about. Let's start with you, Anthony, a quick introduction. Um, who is Aduna? Well, first, great to meet you, Rob. Um, Aduna is a joint venture that was formed by, uh, right now it's in excess of a dozen carriers and, um, and Ericsson. And it really is a wonderful joint venture. It's all in the name. The name Aduna means coming together of different entities. And that's exactly what, uh, it's a Latin based name. And that's exactly what the, uh, what's actually happening. So um, it is an opportunity for a whole series of pioneers in our industry to sort of come together and normalize and harmonize the use of APIs that actually open up really core elements within uh, within the networks. There's a trillion dollars have been expended on some of these networks. There's some fantastic capabilities in there. And we're at the point where the season is right to be able to expose some of those to, uh, to the innovators, the builders and the makers in the industry to take full advantage of those. Uh, and so we're embarking on a journey, which I assume will take a little bit of time, but the momentum behind us right now makes me feel pretty good about that journey that the season really is right. So it's in a nutshell, that's how I would describe it. Excellent. And one follow-up question then, because you already mentioned it's a JV with Ericsson and a, and a few telcos. So explain exactly the role of Ericsson and how it all fits with uh, Vonage. Well, it is uh, Vonage is a demand side uh, uh, entity that would use Aduna. They would use the Aduna platform, which would have network APIs that are populated by each of the carrier partners. Now, the carrier partners need not be uh, an equity partner. You could be an equity partner, which was the founding, the founding component, but now we're adding on many network partners, and you'll hear more of that as time goes on as we, as we expand. And what that does is that gives, provides more coverage for demand side players such as Vonage, such as InfoVip, such as Google, uh, and uh, such as Cinch, who have all also are demand side players, and they will take advantage of the, you know, of what we do, which we, cent we centralize the complexity and we actually distribute the simplicity of, of using network APIs. And, and that's the role that they play. And then on the other side, of the platform, the, the layer one level is the uh, connectivity on the supply side to each of the um, carriers, whether it's a, a venture partner or whether it's a network partner, they all connect in and they could leverage that particular platform themselves. Okay, excellent. Yeah, that, that explains. Um, I saw the announcements uh, one or two weeks ago of the partnership with Singe and InfoBip, um, who are also members of the Alliance, just like Aduna since uh, since last week. So really excited to have all you guys uh, on board. Um, Ferry, as an industry expert um, that's been in this space with all these telcos and operators for a little while, what do you make of this, this concept of a JV with Ericsson and, I don't know, uh, 12 or more of these telcos? Yeah, and first, let me apologize for my voice and my looks uh, today. I'm actually sick, but I find this topic so important. I'm here, so uh, life uh, from my sick bed. Um, what is interesting is that the telcos had a ton of opportunity in messaging, for example, with RCS. They had a bunch of opportunities around monetizing, for example, mobile payments. And they were too focused on competing each other instead of working together. So we lost a lot of monetization opportunity. So what I really like about Aduna is that it brings, you know, the premier telcos, you know, the large Americans, very large Europeans, uh, some from Asia, important from Asia, Australia, the Middle East together. So instead of fighting with each other, playing a zero sum game is really playing a game of making this ecosystem happen. And every time we talk with banks, we talk with, you know, defense contractors with, 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 with airlines, they're really, and you talk about their problems, these type of network APIs can really solve that. So it is really a way, can we bring this network APIs to a bunch of developers? That's the real challenge and real growth opportunities. And what we really like is that Aduna is doing that together. Instead of every telco try to do it themselves, not having scale, you know, uh, having slightly different versions of everything so it's not easy to use. We now have a giant, you know, kind of wholesale layer that will, you know, will enable and create scale. And then, of course, they got partners like Singe, Phonage, Google, that can then um, build exciting stuff on top of it. So I think it's really a sign that the telco 
learned the lessons from you know not being able to monetize a whole bunch of things in the past and now trying it with this so so very excited uh, that this happened yeah i think that's a great point um because there have been attempts of course in the past to open networks i did a project at kpn six or seven years ago where this was totally uh, not uh, appreciated back then i would say now we have a wave of open apis and 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 and, and it's all fashionable so what are you going to do as aduna anthony to to keep that momentum going and what do you think is your biggest biggest role in that uh, in that play well, I think what we do is we're a neutral partner amongst all of the uh, existing partners and potential partners, and they come in each and every day. I think what we do is we basically are matchmaking between the supply and the demand side. The demand side is super important, right? I mean, if you take a look at why would, uh, um, you know, Ascension, Infobip, Avonage, uh, Google, etc., find interest here. They find interest because there's value there. They've created value in their own worlds, and because they serve the need, they still see that need to be uh, to be expanded. And those network APIs provide another area of value. And I don't think the industry as a whole want to see that value erode like we saw last time. I mean, the reality is the CPAS industry has grown. Uh, despite the fact that we had some of these networks in that that were uh, geographically somewhat isolated, right? Um, because when you're looking at the demand side, the enterprise is actually, when they have a solution or a problem and they're looking for a solution, that problem really doesn't exist just in one country. Right? It exists in multiple countries and it needs to be a global uh, solution. And they want global consistency, global reliability, Right? They, they, they want those things and it was really tough for them to get. And then that's where this value was created outside of the, the, the uh, carrier environment. Now, Aduna has the opportunity to basically harmonize that and make sure that that consistency and that global nature. And we've got the, the standards base of Kamara that we're sort of anchoring on for the most part. I think the industry's done a really good job on saying, hey, look, Here's a set of standard APIs that we want to use. Everyone implement the same way. And then I can become, a, you know, Duda can come in as a bit of a clearinghouse to be able to make them available and make them available consistently. Now, we also are a forcing function to the supply side. Like the supply side get the opportunity to do two things. One is we can show them a path on how to stand it, you know, how to implement or how to expose those APIs, not through because we're any smarter or uh, no more than they do, but we are bringing the best business practices across all of the players and we share it with those with those players. That's, that's, uh, that's number one. And then the other thing that they really do get an experience from is carriers operate really within the jurisdiction which they currently operate in. So their demand, their understanding of where the demand exists is only within where their existing tentacles are. But when you're a part of this, your tentacles now are global in nature. We can bring specificity as to where the demand might be coming from and why and what is the nuances associated with it. And they can learn from that and they can take that back into their organizations and actually potentially, and I would argue will, divert resources and effort into bolstering or improving the network in that particular area to make sure they took advantage of the demand side that we would be privy to that they wouldn't otherwise have seen. And that is super powerful because we think it's a we think that engine it's a it's a loop where you usually invest where you see demand. But if you have a blind spot on demand that is not in the jurisdiction that you exist in, then why would you invest in it in the first place? And now within the Duna, that knowledge and that that um, that guidance can come from a from a place that's neutral in uh, for the most part. And I think that's a really big deal. I don't think that is trivial. At first, it's tough to get. Uh, B, I don't think it's trivial. I think it's quite nuanced. And then C, nobody's, I mean, people have tried it before, but when you see it at this level and the momentum that's happening now, it just tells me that the season is right for it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I recognize that. Um, and I think the, the let's say, the invention of Aduna on the supply side is a big step, right? Because altogether with the uh, uh, members or the, 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 the JV owners or what the, whatever you call them, uh, you have like 70 or 70%, 75% coverage globally of, of, of devices, right? So that's a, that's a huge step. So now the big question, I think, I'm looking at you again, Ferry, um, because I, I, I know that McKinsey made some predictions about this becoming a, a really sizable market. Um, and I'm not too worried about, let's say, the exact number. But the big question, of course, is how are we going to really make it a success also commercially? So how are we going to, as an industry together, grow, uh, develop these use cases, um, assuming that Aduna do the work that they're supposed to work to do, right? To bring all these APIs out. Now, the big question, um, how do we get to these new applications um, and, 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 and generate some real revenues for everybody? I think number one is, of course, to your point, is the supply needs to be there because without supply, it doesn't work. And therefore, I think Anthony is one of the most important persons in the industry now with, with the JV partners to make sure that we can get supply. Um, because without supply, it's all theoretical. But once you got the supply, um, I think there's a couple of things that needs to happen. And number one is developers, because in the end, developers, and we always, when we think developers, you think about guys like me now with, with a hat and, and a, but that's also large system integrators, like large Indian system integrators, large American system integrators. It is people working for banks, people working for insurance companies. They need to do, I was at a developer conference for fintech players and um, uh, know your customer is a big thing. And people want to, people have a big problem there. So when I explained that Camara APIs could work with that, they got really excited. They said, where can we buy that? I would love to experiment with it. And what does it do for my business? So, ah, well, you know, uh, give us a couple of months and we get there. So I think supplies, number one, is important. Second is developers and developer is a large ecosystem of indie developers, of, of system integrators, of ISVs, of developers within in companies. And then there's a couple of use cases like in fraud, in... Um, financial services in identity which are very clear there's a couple of them we still we we're, we can touch for example now in the uk there isn't as is a law where if you want to watch a certain amount certain content let's not name it you need to prove you're above 18 and and again you can do it with a facial scan very scary you can give your credit card very scary you can do it with your mobile phone number and again that could be a phenomenal uh, way to use some of these camera apis so i think there is a lot of potential there so there's work to be done to get the supply, to get people to use it, and to make it easy to get code samples, to get snippets, to, to really work on creating this in the hands of the people, and then work with it. So every CEO I spoke with of, and we and, and we ask, we don't ask them, what do you want to do with network APIs? Because people say, what are network APIs? Nobody knows what it is. But if you ask them, what is your biggest problem? In a bank, the moment they're past the, the interest rates, they easily get to fraud because and KYC, they're spending so much money on it. And if you're if you're basically talking with an entertainment company, once they start, you know, stop complaining about the decline of linear TV, they want new experiences. They want 4K, they want 3D, they want AR. And again, a lot of these APIs do it. So you go industry, if you go to a car company, their company, their cars are becoming software with wheels. So they need updates, they need oversight of self-steering, they need to get data out. A lot of the times when you talk with CEOs of different verticals and you ask them what are your problems. And you know what network APIs are. You say, hey, I can help. But I think we need to start a dialogue with what's your pain point and get there. So first apply developers and then have those conversations around what are the pain points of the industry. And then we need to be smart to do it. Some of that we can do. Some of that, that needs to be done by the developers themselves who basically said, hey, that's interesting. I can do X with that or I can do Y with it. it, it I love the notion as this Dutch guy, Peter Levers, who's a, a, a programmer, he used mid journey and these kind of APIs to create a, a way to create post post photo pictures of yourself. I didn't come up with that idea when you had Gen AI, but he got the toolbox and he came up with an idea. So I think it's also important to let the ecosystem develop some, some ideas. Yeah, I like what you said about the developers and developer ecosystem and um, that there are so many developers that don't work for startups in the attic, right? That's sort of the, the the romantic view that developers have hoodies and a baseball cap and and, and they live on pizza and Coke. Um, but a lot of developers, especially when you think about the use cases for network APIs, are really at enterprises and in system integrators and are trying to solve real problems in healthcare, in logistics, in energy transition, 
in some real serious business um, where I think telcos and operators with their uh, set of capabilities have a very distinct role to play if they just go with this open network, API, software mindset, um, thinking a little bit more. Um, so I think it's really exciting that we're getting there. We're starting to get there as an industry. Of course, we have a lot of CPAS uh, 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 providers in our membership who are also, just as you said, Ferry, they're starting to see, they're starting to embrace, they're starting to, to add the network APIs to what they do because it's just one of the possibilities to get a job done uh, and sometimes it's better. And I think you're right. We need to start at the at the end and um, what's the problem that we're trying to solve or that a business is trying to solve and what sort of support do we need as an industry do we need to give them so that they can make it work and that they can then um, go from let's say a prototype to 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 a sustainable business um, so it's really cool um looking ahead in a few days we'll all be in barcelona a mobile world um the yearly let's say crazy week where 100K plus people get together um, and try to find each other in these nine holes. Um, what can we expect uh, there? Uh, what's, what's going to be some of the highlights for you there, uh, Anthony? Well, I think we can expect uh, a lot of shoe leather to be used. I think we can expect people to uh, be completely exhausted by the end of the day. But I think there's going to be a lot of learning. Most of the uh, most of the time, these shows are really getting an opportunity to see where the industry is. In our case, I think we will be exposing. I mean, what we're really talking about is an ecosystem here. You know, we're building an ecosystem. That's what that's what a, a Duna has a name, but it really is the name of a bit of an ecosystem that's being that's being grown, and it's a reputational ecosystem. We just talked about um, the developer community and the builders and the makers you know one of the areas we keep talking about is the, you know id and fraud etc i mean you get rock solid networks and you put them together you have an ecosystem that is reputational and i think that's going to become really important i think that'll start to come to the fore i think you'll see that ecosystem expand while we're at mobile world congress that would be my my prediction um I, you know, I'm excited by it. I think there are uh, tremendous opportunities, but like most opportunities, you really have to prioritize, right? Sometimes you can you can smother something by being too uh, by making the right wrong prioritization. So supply is going to be a certain uh, a big deal. We'll be prioritizing uh, prioritizing that. The demand side we know is there because given all the players that have come our way. But at this event, usually the supply side sort of exists there. So you'll see that ecosystem grow. I look forward to help growing. Yeah, awesome. Ferry, your perspective as an industry expert, what uh, what what do you uh, look I for think there will be a ton of announcement, a ton of developer stuff. Where what I really hope is that the people meet the telcos, the CSPs, and really reconfirm and, and regain trust in what they're trying to do. Again, this will not work if we're fighting as an industry. This will not work if we try to get the first dollar out. Because yes, you know we all want monetization, but the reality is that many APIs or many tech innovations will take a time to monetize. So I hope we can really circle around with all the key CSPs, with the key players, and say, hey, this is, has a hundred billion dollar opportunity. And again, I know everybody's critical about my hundred billion dollar, but if you take the opportunity, what it can do with connectivity what it can do. It really can differentiate connectivity. It can help us to get into edge compute. It can help with payments. There's a lot of opportunity out here. So let's go for the size of the price. Let's not go for $100 million next year. No, let's get to $100 billion five. Let's lay the foundation. And again, let's get together and say, hey, as an industry, we are going to build $100 billion together. And I think that would be such a big change since 4 and 5G that we really do it together as an industry. And, and let's be future focused. $100 billion in five years not who gets the first 50 million or who gets the first reference case. No, we're, we're really together going for 100. That is my my, my um, preacher version of what I would like to see out coming out of MWC. So that's more a wish maybe than the reality, but that's what we will be pushing for. Excellent. Well, that sounds great. Um, thank you both for being here. Um, Ferry, um, um, get well soon because uh, you have a, a bit of a week next week. Um, Anthony, I look forward to seeing you in person there as well. And I'll talk to you later after the show to see if any of our predictions came out. Thank you.
now I need to wait for the upload now.